You know, it should be an executive order to watch Art 101 with Mr. Burger. Art, 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 Art 101 with Mr. Burger. Scholars, welcome back to Art 101 me, Mr. Berger. As you know by now, I'm a professional artist and a master educator who attempts to provide the best in art historical content. If you like this content, like, share, follow, interact, do all those things that you do. I really appreciate that. What do you suppose would happen if you said yes? Now this morning, who would have guessed I was getting dressed? <laughs> and uh, of course, I was putting my socks on one foot at a time like most people do. And check this out. I put my Mona Lisa socks on and instantly I was ready to go, ready to make a video and inspired to tell a little bit of the background of the arguably the most famous painting in all of art history, the Mona Lisa. So let's go ahead and jump right in and give you a little bit of the nuts and the bolts in the background of this very elusive painting. Leonardo da Vinci was not one to be personally attached to his art, but there was one exception, and that exception was the Mona Lisa, that he would paint from 1503 to 1506 with maybe a little bit of work done in 1517. And this is a work that he did on a plank of poplar wood. Now when he started this painting, he began with the landscape, the background, and he would have had that finished first and then adding the other elements on top. The work shows aerial perspective, and it is believed that he would have used a projecting type device known as the camera obscura to create the portrait. Now, starting about 1490, da Vinci had created some 270 designs on variations of camera obscura devices in his sketchbooks, and he and others saw this drawing aid as a very revolutionary technology that would cut down the time that it would take to draw out things, and it did spark some controversy in its time because it was believed that it was a form of cheating. Strangely enough, it's a controversy that continues to this day. You sit on a throne of lies. The Mona Lisa herself has a few origin stories, but one is that it was a commission by Ludovico Savorza, who had hired Leonardo da Vinci to paint one of his mistresses, Cecilia Gallerani. In some letters that were written at that time of creation, it was described how beautifully he had painted her eyebrows. But look at Mona Lisa, she doesn't have any eyebrows. And so that leads us to a question, what the heck is going on? But the fact of the matter is that this painting was reworked many, many times. In fact, scientific analysis of this painting has revealed hairpins, pearls in her hair that were removed, adjustments to her eyes and fingers, the size of her head, hairstyles, she was believed to have a blanket on her lap, all kinds of things were done. And that's why when we see a drawing like this, a sketch created by Raphael Sanzio in 1505, a replica of the Mona Lisa, it doesn't look like the Mona Lisa. Mm, not that I'm aware of, no. It wasn't because he got the whole thing wrong and he didn't know what he was drawing. It was because it was a work that was in continual evolution and progress and he just happened to see it during a phase that is different from what we know as Mona Lisa today. Bring it in for the real thing! <laughs> Now, Ludovico had a reputation for seducing women. He fell in love with his niece, Isabella of Argonne, and even had relationships with his sister-in-law, Isabella de Esti. But at any rate, in 1485, he had this love affair with Cecilia Gallerani, who he met through Leonardo da Vinci. You see, he had painted her several times, including in 1489 as the Lady with the Ermine. So they were introduced, they had a romantic fling sort of thing going on, and he had commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to create this painting of her his mistress, despite moving forward with a marriage to a young lady by the name of Beatrice. The two were married in 1491. However, Cecilia continued to live in his castle and even had a son by Ludovico in May of 1491, the same year, as you recall, that he was married to someone else. 
as would probably obviously happen, Beatrice found out about this relationship and told Ludovico that she had to go. So, he gave her another property in 1492 where she could live and eventually she was married to another artist by the name of Il Bergamano and the couple would have four children together. Another interesting side note is that Leonardo da Vinci was the wedding planner that planned the event of the wedding between Ludovico and Beatrice, despite the fact that he was continuing to create a portrait of his mistress. Like art, what you see is, you know, you infer whatever you infer from it, and then if you learn something about it, that changes what you see, and that's interesting to me. Another interesting side note is while Leonardo da Vinci was employed by Ludovico for creation of paintings, sculptures, the creation of designs for machinery, weapons, and various buildings that were created in 1482, Leonardo in fact worked for him 17 years, only leaving after he fell from power in 1499. 1499. Another interesting tidbit about Mona Lisa is that there is no signature directly by Leonardo da Vinci, but he did sign the work. The greenish-gray color of the dress is called Leonetto, or the color of lion's fur. And the knot design on the dress is called Vincere. And you put the color and the knot design, it's Leonetto Vincere or Leonardo da Vinci, if you say it quickly. Don't tell me! Another variation of the story is that it was a portrait of Lisa Giardina, who was the wife of an individual that commissioned the work, and that's the most recognized version of the story, I suppose. But there are also versions of the story where they believe that it was Isabella of Argon, Costanza Diavlos, Pacifica Brandano, Isabella Guandella, Katrina Saforza, or Bianca Savorza. We really don't know. But at any rate, this painting hung in Napoleon's bedroom and he would kiss it every night before bed and every morning upon waking up. And he would continue this throughout his leadership starting in 1799 until his exile in 1815. It was at the Louvre on display since 1497. In the 1800s, she began to get a little bit of hype as an alluring painting and seen as a timeless beauty, but she was not going to be a household name until 1911 when she was stolen. The main culprit that was blamed for this was Pablo Picasso. However, he had nothing to do with this particular theft. It was basically taken off the wall by an employee of the Louvre, and he just about literally walked out the door with it and attempted to sell it in Italy because this art thief, Incenzo Aluza, was arrested and the artwork was returned to the rightful owner. But this hitting the news became big time international news and so the fame and popularity of Mona Lisa spread like crazy. She would become the most famous, the most recognized, the most copied, the most parodied, the most visited, the most written about artwork in all of art history. So hopefully you liked that video. Check out the others in the series and uh, you have yourself a good day. Real nice looking, maybe, but <laughs> not beautiful. <laughs>